Have you ever witnessed someone say if you don't like it, leave and everyone left? What was the story? For more infotainment, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates. Thanks for watching. Every year the military has this event they host named the Warrior Games. It's like the Olympics for men and women who were injured while serving. I'm a decent cyclist so I was selected to represent the Marine Corps team in that event. I'm not sure where they hold the event these days but the year I was selected they flew us out to Colorado Springs. When I got there I quickly realized that 99% of the Marines competing were still active duty. I had retired a few years prior so it was weird being around Marines again. Almost immediately after arriving the senior leaders and officers in charge began demanding that I get my hair cut and to shave my beard. At first I laughed it off and thought they were joking. Turns out they were quite serious. The lady who was in charge of the marine team was a major and she took me off to the side and ordered me to get a haircut. I reminded her that I had retired a few years prior and was no longer required to abide by active military grooming standards. Then a light bulb went off in her head and with a smirk she said well you either get a haircut or you can go home. Your choice. So I smirked back and said guess I'm flying home. They had already pre-purchased our airplane tickets home so all I did was call Delta, explain what happened, and the lady on the other end transferred my ticket to a flight home the next day. I had taken a few weeks off work to attend this event so I just went back home and enjoyed my time off with my hair and beard. A former industrial job I used to have said that during an all-hands meeting. We were understaffed, underpaid, and overworked, and everyone knew it. Instead of the 2 slash 1 ratio of two machines to one operator for safety reasons, we'd have 4, 6, 8, because people were getting paid less than most retail jobs to bust there in some of the most disgusting work I've ever done. You'd come home covered in moldy coolant, metal shavings, and stink. Machines started breaking down, because they'd never shut them down to perform maintenance on them, so we'd often have massive problems, which, of course, meant even more overtime to make up for the broken machines, and people started quitting. Management's response was to tell us that they expected us to work harder, because they couldn't get more help in. One of my co-workers, who generally gave no, asked, in front of everyone in that room, why they didn't try raising the poor wages, and see if they could entice people that way. The response was we're not having that conversation right now. If you don't like it, you can quit. Who, buddy, was that the wrong thing to say? As soon as word got out to the other shifts, what can only be called a exodus began. We lost half of each shift within the week. I stuck around for a few more weeks, until I had a conflict with my schooling at the time, since one of my classes got out about 30 minutes before my shift, 30 minutes away, so I warned them in advance that I might be a few minutes late one day a week, maybe and got told that I needed to decide what was more important, my school, or my job. So I quit. And giggled my off at the sign in the HR office that said we had an almost 80% turnover rate. Never did find out what happened to that hellhole, but I can't imagine anything good with losing that many people. The poor HR rep seemed like she was just so done with everything, and seemed so very apologetic as she took my badge. I had that issue with Walmart. One of my managers was going off on me because I was only part-time for the summer and was my last week and he didn't like that. And he went on about kids these days are lazy and unwilling to work because of school and that if they leave work all the time for just the summer, it won't look good in their resumes. I just shrugged and said okay. I mean I had school, I find that more important than money right then. I left and 12 years later. I'm in a good job and I put all my part-times and full-times of all my jobs on my resumes. And guess what? They like I have so much experience in retail and other jobs because it shows I keep my commitment to them and consider my education important, especially after explaining why I had too many part-time jobs. It's usually owners slash managers who think you should be grateful just to be working for them. I got a job washing dishes one summer between grades 11 and 12. I made it clear that it was only summer thing. I would be leaving at the end of August, 
as school is back in the first week in September. I didn't even take any vacation all summer, so I could put the money away. There were four of us total doing this job, one early morning, two daytime and myself in the evening. I walk in on my last shift before school starts up again to see a pile of dishes. The owner of the restaurant had gotten into an argument with the daytime guys about how to stack mugs and ended up firing one, and the second walked out because it was. The fourth guy had apparently been missing in action for days, I just never noticed because of the day guys. The owner asks me to drop out of my senior year of high school to work for minimum wage, full time during the day. When I said no, I'm going back to school next week his response was to turn his back to me. He never acknowledged me again, and yelled to the rest of the kitchen I don't know why kids get jobs if they don't want to work. As if it was my fault he was in this mess. My husband worked at a really toxic job for a while. As staff got fired or quit, they weren't replaced, to cut costs, and instead the remaining two employees were worked to death. Finally, the owner, who was a boss and terrible businessman, called a meeting with the two to try to force an attitude adjustment. The employees tried to be constructive and talk about things they saw that needed to be improved upon to make things work better, and of course this egotistical owner wouldn't have it. He told them if they couldn't handle the expectations that they were free to levs. So they did. Both of them left immediately and never set foot in the store again. I don't think the owner was expecting that at all. He expected them to grovel and beg to keep their jobs and thank him for the opportunity to work 70-hour weeks under his tyrannical rule. My husband called me after that meeting and was so upset he couldn't hardly tell me what happened. He was terrified he was so sure I would be angry at him for quitting his job when we really weren't in a position that I could support us. I wasn't mad at all. I was so proud of him for not taking the that was being doled out to him and doing what is best for his mental health. He's a damn good man and deserved better. Worked at Thai restaurant. Owner's daughter who was manager left town for a couple weeks and we realized once she left that she was stealing our tips slash tipping us out way less than herself for over a year if working there with her. When she got back we confronted her at the end of the night during her shift since she refused to meet with us in an official group meeting. The four of us, servers, called her out and she said if you don't like it then get out or sue me. We were all 18 to 20 years old and didn't really know what to do so three of us quit on the spot in that moment and walked out the door. I'll never forget the look on her face. Not exactly but my sister had a habit of picking fights with people and when it wasn't going her way, she'd tell them she was removing them from her life. She's done it to boyfriends, long-time friends, sorority sisters, she did it to me twice. The first time. I rolled my eyes because she's younger than me. After the second time my sister told me I'm removing you from my life, you're toxic. And unfriended me and told family I was toxic, in reality, I wasn't letting her be toxic, selfish, and under the influence of whatever she was on with slash to me, my spouse, or my kids, so she decided to was a good idea to threaten us, I said okay, fine. Per her usual routine. After a few weeks she came around and wanted to pretend she never said the things she said I didn't respond. She claimed it all was a joke and she had a right to be in my kids lives. I haven't spoken to her in two years. I honestly do not miss her drama and it was the best decision for my family. It highlighted how bad the generational dysfunction was in my family and how it was expected to just overlook bad behavior and people please for everyone else's comfort. I realized that I didn't want my kids to repeat that cycle. I vowed to always put my kids first. I'm not popular in my family right now but I've never been happier and this was the first year I got to enjoy holidays without having panic attacks or dread. When someone walks out of your life, let them. Edited to add paragraphs.